Yesterday, the University of California system announced that they were going to eliminate the SAT and ACT from consideration in admission to their schools. What does that mean to you? What does that mean going forward in admission? I wanna talk about the immediate implications, the impact on admissions, the broader considerations of this, and finally, what you need to do and what you need to know. I'm Megan Dorsey from collegeprepresults.com, co-host of the College Prep Podcast. I'm here today with what we can see as my slightly longer, less highlighted um, quarantine hair. Haven't had a haircut in many months, did a little home trim, and am way past due on what I would prefer for my summer highlights. But going forward with that, let's talk about this University of California decision. The first thing is what are the immediate consequences? Because I've been getting calls, texts, emails from clients in California and around the country saying, well, what does this mean? What do I need to know? The first thing is students applying to UC schools, we're talking UCLA, Berkeley, any of the other University of California schools, won't need the SAT or ACT for the fall. That's not really a big change. A couple months ago, they announced that due to all of the postponements and cancellations resulting from the coronavirus, that they weren't gonna require students to submit scores this fall anyway. Now, is this gonna make it easier to get into UCLA or Berkeley or any of the UC schools? Absolutely not. The UC schools have already become so competitive that really only top students were getting in to begin with regardless of test scores. This places greater emphasis on things like your high school grades and your class rank. I live in Texas, and this reminds me a lot of what we've done in Texas over the last 15 or so years. We have what we would call the top 10% rule, where students who graduate in the top 10% of their high school class, except for University of Texas at Austin, which lately had limited it to the top 6%, will automatically be admitted. Now, students did have to submit SAT and ACT scores, but those weren't used for consideration. It really was based solely on a student's high school rank. Did it make it easier to get in to UT or Texas A&M? Absolutely not. What it did was instead of being able to balance out, I've got my grades and my scores and my resume, it put all of the pressure on class rank. And that didn't necessarily make it easier or better. It made it a one factor means of admission. So what's going to happen with University of California system? How is that gonna impact admissions decisions? The first thing that you need to know is that at a lot of schools where they have gone test optional, a number of students are still submitting scores, meaning if you took the SAT or ACT in this past year and you have a great score, go ahead and send it. They will consider it. And the University of California said they will consider it for the next couple years. What we've seen in a number of colleges and universities that have taken the test optional route lately is that students are still submitting scores and they're submitting good scores. So what that means is that the strong test taker is getting a little bump in admission because in addition to the rest of their application, they're able to show great test scores. Removing the testing requirement takes out what for some students is a good opportunity to show their ability. Removing SAT or ACT from consideration helps the strong student who's got good grades all through high school but isn't a great test taker, but it isn't the best option for all students. We've got a number of students who would prefer to show, hey, I know I messed up in a class or for a semester or a year, but I'm on an upward trend and look, my test scores prove that. I've had a number of people say, but Megan, are you gonna be out of business in the next couple years? No. You may not need to hire me for SAT or ACT prep, but I promise you're gonna need to hire me because your application has now become that much more important. Your essays, your resume, the rest of your application is going to come under greater scrutiny. 
I've got another video where I explain a little bit more about the implications on the application when you remove test scores. And I'll put a link to that in the comments. Let's talk about the broader implications going forward. Maybe you weren't even thinking about a University of California school, but this decision is going to have some impacts in education. First, and I already mentioned this, some students are gonna lose the ability to show their strength. Again, the student who struggled at some point and is using their test scores to say, I know, I know really these grades I've gotten in the last year can be confirmed by my numbers, they're gonna lose that opportunity. Here's another key issue. If you read all of the things about the University of California decision, they don't say they're completely eliminating testing. What they say is they're going to look into making their own. Their own test, really? That just means more testing, more prep, another hassle. I don't know, we're just gonna have to see how that goes and where that goes. There are some good things. It forces those of us in higher education to really analyze what we're doing and how we're using the SAT and the ACT. I'll be the first to admit, these tests are imperfect. They are not the ideal predictor of a student's success in college. They are absolutely coachable, but they do allow for a good standard comparison across students from multiple high schools, even from multiple countries. The student who's scoring super high on these tests does have a different grasp of the material than a student who's really struggling. Doesn't mean that both couldn't be successful, but it is a great way to evaluate. High school grades are not. We see that there are a number of places that suffer from grade inflation. Many places are not ranking students anymore, so we can't even compare them to their own classmates. The SAT and ACT allow for a more standardized comparison. I understand the concern that the University of California has that these tests might disadvantage minority students, but the number one issue really comes down to money. Students who are more affluent have the opportunity usually to attend better schools or maybe private schools they can hire people like me to help coach them for the SAT and ACT. We can remove the tests, but the advantages that affluent students have aren't going to be removed. They're still going to be attending schools that may better prepare them for the rigors of academic life at University of California schools or anywhere. And we're going to see even more coaching as necessary for students to get their essays and applications to the point where they could get in to the University of California schools. So I don't know that removing testing is going to remove that bias. Here's the most important thing. What do you need to do? How does this impact you? The very first and most important thing is keep earning those top grades. Take challenging classes, pursue your academic interests while still maintaining a good college preparatory core curriculum. Your high school transcript has been and will continue to be the number one factor in admission. The next thing is get and stay involved in activities and organizations of interest to you. Meaningful involvement is the key here, but that's not new news either. The third thing, go ahead and plan to take and prepare to take the SAT or ACT and do your best. You're probably going to be asked to send these scores to some school anyway. Most of my clients who apply to UC schools are applying to schools elsewhere, or you may be using your SAT or ACT scores for things like scholarships or national merit recognition. None of that has changed. Most students are likely going to need the SAT or ACT anyway. I would doubt at this point that there's gonna be a student who has an entire college list made up exclusively of test optional colleges. It could be, but you would have to almost craft it that way on purpose. Finally, understand that if you do apply test optional and you aren't sending scores, the rest of your application really needs to be ready to pick up that weight that was previously carried by your standardized testing. Your essays need to be spot on. 
Your resume needs to be honed, edited, well-crafted, thoughtful, and your high school transcript needs to be shining with strong grades and strong course choices. So the answer is what do most people need to do? Keep doing what you've been doing. Keep following the standard admission advice. In five or 10 years, the world of college admissions may look dramatically different than it does today or not. But for now, not much has changed.